Welcome back to The Mining Pod. On today's show, we're joined by Dave Kemmerer, co-founder of Coin Ledger, to discuss all your crypto tax questions. We talk about taxable income, cost basis, and crypto mining itself. David, welcome to The Mining Pod. Thank you so much for your time today. We're going to talk about everyone's least favorite conversation, that is taxes, but probably the most important to stay out of jail. And uh, this last year was you know, pretty notable in terms of crypto, a lot of uh, ups and downs, and people are probably scratching their heads a little bit what's going to occur uh, when that deadline comes to pass. But again, thank you for joining the show. Yeah, thank you for having me on. Excited to, again, talk about taxes and hopefully answer some questions and put people at ease because it can be an annoying and stressful thing to have to do. Yeah, it definitely can be stressful. I remember last year I was working with some crypto tax software. I don't believe it was yours. Um, in fact, I know it was not yours and it just was not doing what I needed to do. And I had a lot of DeFi transactions. Uh, yes, I do some DeFi stuff to to listeners who are Bitcoin maximalists. They might be upset, but um, I do some DeFi transactions here and there and I had way too many and it was just a mess. So uh, a good software like Coin Ledger is definitely a bonus. Let's get a profile from you on maybe yourself and then Coin Ledger, and then of course a pitch on Coin Ledger versus any other tax software that's out there, whether it be crypto or not. So uh, yeah, again, my name is David Kemmer. So I was part of the team that started Coin Ledger back in the spring of 2018. So hard to believe it's been that long, but it was really back then when we first, me and my partners kind of ran into the tax reporting problem that is kind of unique, honestly, to the Bitcoin and crypto space. And it all stems because of the interoperable nature of digital assets, right? It's because of the fact that you can buy crypto from something like Coinbase and transfer it to your self-custodial wallet or mine it um, that it quickly becomes difficult to account for all these transfers, transactions, thus track your basis and actually figure out what's your actual taxable income for the year. So Coin, Coin Ledger was born out of that problem. Really, you know, we wanted to build a piece of software that would integrate with all wallets and exchanges, be able to vacuum in all of that transaction history and data, make sense of it, and just quickly spit out the relevant tax forms that you need, you know, as a taxpayer. And so it you know, can spit out and tell you how much income did you earn from mining or how much capital gains did you have from selling or disposing of Bitcoin. So that's really what CoinLedger does today. You know, we support over 400,000 users all over the world, the highest rated platform on the market. Um, and we've grown a lot since that start in 2018. But yeah, my background is all on the go-to-market side. So building sales and marketing systems for software companies. And so that's what I really focus on here at CoinLedger. Yeah. So the question I have really just to start off the conversation is more about like alternatives. So so someone who might be filing for the first time or they just got into Bitcoin mining, they might be filing, filing these tax forms for the first time. What's the typical way to come into this, right? You have TurboTax, you have a form, you fill out some some paperwork and you're done or like what's the pitch for using a crypto tax solution so platforms like TurboTax or tax act you know or any of these you kind of call it third-party e-filing companies really haven't touched the crypto component of it um they've started to dabble but nowhere near what you would kind of need if you have any amount of complexity outside of just frankly, like buying and selling Bitcoin on an exchange like Coinbase, right? If you are mining crypto or transferring it from one wallet to another, you need to reconcile all those transactions to actually figure out what your total capital gains or income was. And a platform like TurboTax is going to have a very difficult time doing that natively at the platform. What CoinLedger does, which is, you know, very differentiated from something like TurboTax is, you know, we're, we're purely focused on kind of being that accounting engine for Bitcoin and cryptocurrency users. So, you know, from day one, we're, we're integrated with, you know, over 500 exchanges, blockchains and wallets. And so we're going to have a much simpler, easier time reconciling and spitting out the relevant tax forms that you're going to need. And then you can take those forms to your accountants, you know, they'll know what to do with them. 
or import them into an e-filing company like a TurboTax or a Tax Act. And we're partnered up with all of those e-filing companies. So that would be the difference between, you know, this traditional, again, TurboTaxes of the world is they just really don't have the tooling to handle that type of transaction activity for tax reporting. On more of our direct competitors, CoinLedger has been around for a long time. Like I mentioned, it's the highest rated platform amongst consumers for doing Bitcoin and cryptocurrency tax reporting. Why is that? The biggest thing is how we've taken a very long-term approach when we think through things like how on-chain integrations should work. We do we develop all of that in-house. We're not tapping like third-party companies to leverage their APIs and kind of patchwork solutions that they've done for various use cases. We've really taken the longer term approach of, hey, we need to build a lot of this in-house because there's very unique user experiences that people trying to report their taxes need that maybe some other company who needs some integration needs. Um, so the, the short version is just how do we differ differentiate? One, it's just purely on user experience. You can sign up to CoinLedger completely for free. You can test it out and make sure it's going to work for you before you ever have to pay us a dime. And that's a very powerful thing to you know benchmark us against our direct you know crypto tax software competitors. Love that. And going to the next question, tell me about like the question you always get from people. Uh, that's why I'm really curious about when they when they come to you and we're like, they might know you as a friend or like mm -hmm. distant family member. What do I do with my crypto taxes? What are some of the questions that you're you're getting? Yeah, some of the big ones are just confusion on the taxability. A big one is if you're new to the space, people are like, oh, I don't know taxes because I haven't cashed out of crypto yet, right? It's still all in my wallet. And unfortunately, that is not true. You're going to trigger what's called a taxable event just anytime you either earn or dispose of any crypto, crypto asset. So for example, if you're mining Bitcoin and you're getting paid out rewards daily, weekly, monthly, anytime that amount of crypto hits your wallet, you owe income income tax on the fair market value of that amount of Bitcoin when it hit your wallet, right? And you had um, access to it essentially. And so even if you never cash out, you just keep that in your wallet, like you're liable for income tax. The other side, if you trade like one crypto into another crypto, Technically, you're disposing of the first crypto, right? Which is triggering a capital gains tax event. So it's the same thing as if I like bought Apple stock for a hundred bucks, then I sold it or traded it at when it was worth 150. That fifty dollar capital gain is a form of taxable income that has to be reported on my tax return. Um, so I think that's obviously the biggest questions we get is around: would well, just flat out, how does this work? How do I do this? Um, you know, there's a lot more of just like confusion points of how it's actually done. Um, but I'd say that's the most common. Yeah. That seems to be my experience as well. Uh, people are just buying Bitcoin holding it and they're like, do I need to pay taxes on top of this? Or maybe they have losses on it. Uh, and then once you get to like a few more complex things like mining, definitely have more questions. Uh, let's talk about losses. So last year, not so great. For most people, uh, unless you're like an inverse holder out there, like pretty bad year. Tell me about crypto losses, whether you sold during the year or you just held the whole entire time. What are some things that people can do to take advantage of the situation or maybe pay less taxes? So we want to like appreciate that we should be law abiding citizens, but what can we do to like approach taxes from uh, an economical point of view? Yeah. So if you incurred losses, like most of the people did last year, right? pretty much losses across the board. The nice thing about cryptocurrency, which is the exact same as how kind of the taxability of stocks or any other form of property works, is that your loss is net against any gains you have. By the way, across all asset classes. So let's say, you know, you did sell some Bitcoin or you traded some crypto last year and it triggered a capital loss. Those are going to net against any form of capital gains you have, whether it's other cryptocurrency related capital gains, or maybe it's capital gains in the stock market, or maybe you sold a piece of real estate, right? The, your Any losses will net against those gains. So for example, let's say I had a $100,000 capital gain from selling a house last year, or from selling some stocks that I've been holding on to a long time. 
let's say I also incurred $100,000 of crypto losses. Those would net out, these are the same tax here, and I would have $0 of capital gains um, to pay taxes on. So, you know, that would be a tens of tens of thousands of tax savings by filing and incorporating your crypto losses into, again, your holistic tax return. Um, if you just sat and held your crypto, right, and it went technically down in value, right, your portfolio is worth less, you but you're still holding, you haven't actually realized any of those losses. So of course you're sitting on unrealized losses. There's no taxable event that's in, been incurred yet. And so unfortunately you can't like write off that because you're still holding the asset. Um, that's why a lot of digital asset crypto investors, you know, come around December every year. What they'll do is they'll take a look at their holdings and their portfolio and see, okay, which assets that I'm holding are currently underwater, right? Are currently in a lost position. Let me sell those right now. So I book the loss for the year and then I'm going to buy them back a short period after. So I'm still holding the asset, but I've booked that capital loss and thus that loss is beneficial because it lowers my taxable income for that year. So my advice is take a look at your transaction history from last year you might have incurred some taxable events that you kind of forgot about again maybe you traded bitcoin into stable coins or bitcoin into some other asset again you probably triggered some type of loss at that point depending on when you got into the market um and again you'd be wise to include that with your taxes because it's going to lower the amount that you owe uncle sam and so that's another thing that we see is people are like oh i only have losses this year like i don't have to include my taxes and that's not true. You do, and you'd be kind of dumb not to because it's going to lower your tax bill. Fair enough. I like how you put that. Uh, I'll stick with me. So this next question might get a little theoretical. I'm glad you're here. You're going to have to bear with me, though. When I was going through my taxes last year for crypto, the thing that came up was like how I order the taxes or how I order the buying and selling events changed my total payout that I owed to Uncle Sam or the losses I took on it. I think in this case I made a little bit of money, so uh, not a lot, not a lot of bit of money. So anyone listening, don't wrench attack me. Like, not that much money, but did make a little bit of money. And uh, when I was playing around with it, I was trying to change the uh, order of these transactions so I get the least amount of taxes on top of them. I think it goes to like first in, first first out orders. Like you know, I have something something from 2018. I bought at six thousand dollars for Bitcoin. And maybe I sold that in 2021 for more Bitcoin. It gets a little confusing at that point. So walk me through how I can like order these uh, these taxable events if you can. Yes. Yeah, it's kind of a, it can be a foreign concept if maybe, again, you've never taken like accounting courses because these are some of the things that you learn and it, it can quickly get confusing. But so how it works is anytime you're acquiring a capital asset like cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, you are, you know, you, you're incurring these tax lots, right? So let's say you're dollar cost averaging in once a month. And let's say just for simplicity, you buy one Bitcoin every month. You're going to have these various tax lots that were bought at different time periods, right? And your cost basis, how much you spent to acquire that one Bitcoin each time is going to be different, right? Let's say the first time I buy Bitcoin, I spent $10,000 to get one. Second time I got, I spent 20000 to get one. My basis in that first Bitcoin is $10,000. Basis in the second is $20,000. Now, depending on what you alluded to, what costing method you use to kind of account for your um, selling activity, it's going to fluctuate your total capital gains that you incur. So you mentioned FIFO, first in, first out. This is the most common costing method that people use. It's kind of the default. And all it means is, the first tax lot that you acquired is also the first one that you dispose of. So, you know, let's say a year later, I sell 0.5 Bitcoin. It's going to pull, if I'm using FIFO, from that first tax lot that I have. So it actually cut it in half and it'd be like, okay, your basis in that 0.5 is $5,000 because you spent $10,000 on one Bitcoin. And let's say you, you sold that 0.5 for $20,000, right? Then you incur $15,000 of capital gains. But let's say you use a different costing method, like last in, first out. You can see where I'm going. It does the exact opposite. The last tax lot that you acquired is the 
first to get sold off when you're doing the accounting of your disposition. So in that same example, I sold 0.5 for 20 grand. My basis in 0.5, now I'm pulling from that last tax lot. Again, it was one Bitcoin that I spent $20,000 on, say 10,000. My capital gain for that transaction would be only $10,000. So you can see it's lower depending on which tax lot of Bitcoin I'm actually accounting for in the sell-off. The thing is, no matter which you use, they will in the end net out, right? You're just shifting where the gain loss is happening. And, you know, it, de it depends, you know, you may want to use one or the other in different types of market environments, right? In rising prices, you're going to incur a lower bill by selling your most recent lots first in declining environments, vice versa is true. Frankly, I recommend people just stick to one because even software systems like CoinLedger, you'll see can quickly get tripped up if you're trying to flip back and forth between months, years, right? You're just making it very complex on yourself and it gets difficult. Um, so that, that would be my suggestion is pick a costing method, stick to it, um, and your, your life will get easier. But that's like the summary of kind of how that stuff works. There's also th like tax minimization algorithms like HIFO, highest in, first out. And what that algorithm will do is it's going to sell off your highest basis assets first. And so again, it's going to minimize your taxes and maximize the losses that you're taking. Um, now, I would speak to your tax professional also on these topics because there are certain requirements you have to um, match to, that depend on what costing method you are allowed to use. So anything outside of FIFO is what's known as a specific identification method. And you have to have certain records kind of on hand that prove exactly what day, what your basis, how you acquired various assets to kind of qualify you to even use what's known as specific identification costing methods. Um, otherwise you have to default to FIFO. So, uh, Hopefully that's helpful for people listening. No, it's super helpful. Thanks for walking me through that. Uh, it's super complex stuff. And when I was first learning about it, I was fairly tripped up. Let's turn over to the mining stuff. So this is the mining pod after all. So we got to talk about mining taxes. Uh, I'll hand it right over to you. I'm not even going to ask like really much of a preamble question. Just yep. give me the skinny on mining taxes. Anytime you earn property cryptocurrency, you are incurring taxable income unfortunately for us, right? And so if you receive a, a payout, you know, some reward, you hit a block and you get paid out, you're incurring taxable income at the fair market value of that amount of asset at the time kind of hits your wallet. So the easy example is for simplicity's sake, let's say I'm mining Bitcoin and on March 1st, 2022, I received one Bitcoin that's in my wallet for you know hitting the block. And let's say at that time, one Bitcoin was worth $40,000. On March 1st, 2022, I would incur $40,000 of taxable income. And keep in mind that income is just ordinary income, right? You earned it. It's not what's known as capital gains, which happens again when you dispose of property. So you'd, earn, you'd incur $40,000 of taxable income from that mining payout. And let's say two months later, you sell that $40,000 Bitcoin for $50,000. Then on that sale, you incur a $10,000 capital gain. So you're never paying like double tax, but depending on the price fluctuation of the asset after you mined it, that is what will determine your capital gain or a capital loss on disposal of the asset. Um, the, the percentage you're going to pay on that income is dependent on your personal tax bracket. So in that same example, you know, I mined a $40,000 Bitcoin. Let's say I also maybe work as a software engineer and I make $100,000 salary. My total taxable income for the year now is $140,000, right? And you can go look up where that, that falls under from the United States tax brackets, right? It'll be somewhere close to 25 to 30% that I'll actually pay then on that income. Gotcha. And Tell me a little bit about like the hobbyist distinction versus like having my own entity. This won't be helpful for some people who didn't make it right. into BLT last year, but yeah, for those who did. Yeah, good question. So, you know, mining's 
different because some people are going to be mining, you know, truly for business purposes. They're kind of operating a business, you know, they're tracking all their electricity costs, they're tracking and depreciating the cost of the mining equipment. And so again, depending on what your persona of your mining is, if you're mining cryptocurrency as a business, all those expenses can net against your revenues, right? And that's very tax advantageous because you're taxed on the net income of the business. Um, and not just on the top line of the mining rewards that you're incurring. Um, it actually doesn't matter if uh, you actually file like an LLC or whatever. You can still be taxed as a business if, you know, that's how you're structuring the setup. And I would recommend connecting with a tax professional to determine, am I operating a business here? The IRS has some documents on that, but it is specific and dependent on your personal situation. But if you're just mining, quote unquote, as a hobbyist, you know, you just have, you know, some pool running and, you know, just kind of for fun, it's just a hobby, then you're just going to be taxed on that, the payouts of the Bitcoin that you get. You won't get the benefits of being able to deduct the expenses of the business because, of course, you're not operating a business. So um, those are kind of the distinctions. Again, can't give specific tax advice, of course, and it really does depend on the specifics of your situation. So if you're not sure, hey, is is my stuff going to be treated as a business in the eyes of the law or kind of as this hobbyist type thing, how should I file this? That's where I would just like get some advice from someone who's a professional and then you can go on your way after you have that distinction. Love it. Yeah, definitely talk to a professional for anyone listening to this and you're filing this year. It can be pretty tricky. So uh, make sure to pay attention to that. We will have a write-up and mining memo about this as well with a code at the bottom uh, to use for Coin Ledger. A nice little discount code. Thanks to our friends there. Appreciate that. Last question to boot it over to you as we close up here. Anything else that you think people should know about as they go into filing season and are filing their crypto taxes? Yeah. Number one, file your losses. It's going to benefit you in the long run. Even if you didn't have capital gains to net them against last year, you carry them forward. So indefinitely. So if you have $50,000 of losses, you should file those. And those capital losses will carry forward every year until you have completely exhausted them. So let's say two years from now, again, you sell that house or you sell Bitcoin for a bunch of money. Those losses from two years ago will, will still net against that gain in future years. So you'd be very wise. You should absolutely, if you incurred losses, file them because they're going to benefit you down the road. Um, the other thing is... If you do need a professional help advice questions, I would try to get in touch with folks sooner than later. Um, everyone gets insanely busy the closer to that April 15th, I think it's the 18th this year, deadline we get. And if you wait till the end of March and you have some burning questions, it could be very difficult for you to get them answered or to get the help you need because everyone books up from a tax tech perspective. And then, yeah, last thing, sign up for a completely free Coin Ledger account. And we still have a full-time customer support team who would always be thrilled to answer any questions anyone has, um, as well as about their discount for all Compass Mining users. Awesome. David, thank you so much for your time. Thank you to the Coin Ledger team for setting this up. Uh, be sure to check out our Mining Memo article written by the Coin Ledger team about this very topic. And at the bottom of it, you can find a little discount code if you do indeed want to use the coin ledger software but david again thank you for joining us today thank you guys so much for having me we'll, we'll see you later bye